Hi, I'm Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from Craft Sanity, and today I'm going to show you how to make cowls on the Craft Sanity Kindred cowl loom. So it looks like this. These are some cowls that I made using one, uh, I got three balls of a variegated yarn, and I was able to kind of match the colors up and kind of just weave through the skein. So yeah. it's kind of cool how the colors kind of migrate into, you know, from yellow and green to green and turquoise turquoise and yellow and so on down the down the way so you can make these completely out of solid colors if you want you could uh, take I, this is a cotton turquoise yarn mixed with a variegated yarn so that gives it kind of a, all the way through there's the turquoise and then you have that variegated color going through uh, the nice thing about this loom is it's not a really huge project so you can kind of check things out and see experiment and uh, you never know what you're gonna get really until you you weave the whole thing, which is really fun. So we're going to use purple today. So we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna warp this loom with three strands of worsted weight yarn. First thing I'm gonna do is tie it on loosely to the top left corner of the loom here. And I'm making just a, I'm not making a complete knot. I'm just looping it through here like this. And then I'm loosening that wing knot at the top. And I'm just gonna tighten that back up. Okay, so once the yarn is secured in the top left corner here, we're ready to warp the loom. And what we're doing is basically just you know, wrap the yarn, the yarn around the pegs here so we can start weaving. So you go from the top left to the bottom of the loom and you go around this first peg. And then you come back up, go around the first peg on the top. And we're just going to keep wrapping. And sometimes you got to watch your yarn. Sometimes you get these little flubs and you want to just try to keep it keep it smooth when it knots up like this. Okay, so now I'm down to the end of the process of warping. And when I go around this last top peg, I go around the bottom. And because this is worsted weight yarn, I'm gonna go ahead and use this end peg. With bulkier yarns, I don't. I skip and start here. But because this is thinner yarn, I'm gonna go ahead and use that last peg. It's totally optional. And to speed things along here, I'm gonna go right across go around this corner peg on the opposite side and I'm going to turn my loom now just so I can stand in front of it here. Okay, so once you, set, you stretch the yarn across here, we're going to establish our weave pattern and this strand here, we're going to weave as a single strand even though there is, there's three strands of yarn, but we're going to weave this by itself where every other group is going to have six. So we're having these bunches that we went around the peg with. So we're gonna, we've gone over this edge strand and we're gonna take the next loop off. We're gonna pull it over that yarn that we have stretched across. I'm gonna skip the next loop and I'm gonna pull the next one over. I'm gonna do that all the way across to establish that over under weaving pattern. Now you could weave this strand through over under I find that this is a little bit faster and it also protects you from making a mistake on that first that first uh, row of weaving. And if they pop off, it's okay. If you have loose tension, and I didn't mention earlier, but you wanna have your tension be, so this yarn should move. It should not be a struggle. If you're like stretching down, like it's really a struggle to do that, you need to loosen that back up. You wanna have it so they're not sagging terribly but you want to have some movement so if one of these falls off it's not gonna un, you know zing back because it's so tight okay and then once you have that established you can kind of tighten your yarn pull it a little bit tighter over here again it's still fairly loose though there's movement here it's not severely pulled we're gonna this next pass we're doing we're gonna do the opposite of what we just did and I'm gonna I'm gonna use a shed stick here and this is actually uh, a, a giant paint store that I'm using and we're going to package these with the craft sanity looms so you'll get this with your loom and what this does is helps speed up the weaving process so every other time we are weaving we will just be able to quickly raise these strands of yarn up create a shed and put the yarn through and we'll be it's very fast so you can have it standing like this. 
And what you can do is just reach through, grab it with your other hand, and place it on the peg. And then as you're weaving, this your yarn is going to arch up a little bit, and that's good. You do not want to have this pulled so severely that it's super tight. And just keeping it loose like that and pulling down is, is, is a good thing. Okay, and so what you can do is when it's not time to, when we're going to do the opposite, you can just let that rest. And what I do is go about a third of the way back, wrap around that side peg, and just pull through. And I'm always holding this yarn like it's a loop. So it's a throwback to the pot holder weaving, which is basically the inspiration for all the loom designs that are in the Craft Sanity collection. All of these are based on that pot holder weaving principle where you're working with a loop. And now I'm ready to, now I can leave this, I can leave it just like that and that might be faster for some of you if you want to just not have to adjust this every, no, stand it up every time. But you do have a, it's when you open it and you stand it, you take the time to stand it up, you do have a wider space to work with. So it's just up to you, whatever is going to work. I warped the loom with three strands of yarn held together. So when we have these groupings, most of the time you're going to be weaving, you have a group of six strands of yarn. The only place where you don't is on this very edge where you have three. Some people warp their loom and they think, oh no, I've made a mistake. You did not make a mistake. There's going to be three by themselves over here. In the end, before you take this piece off the loom, we're going to end up with six that we do a step at the very end that will get you another strand here. For right now, don't worry about that. Just keep weaving. And if you're not sure what to do, you're like, oh, I want to cross. I don't know if I should go under or over. Look at what you did in the previous row. And if you went under the strand, you're going to go over it on the next pass. So you're going to do the opposite of whatever you did previously. And you can do more complex weaving on here. We'll, we'll be coming out with some videos on some other weave structures in the future. But right now, we just want to get everyone started with the basic under over weaving. The nice and so even without turning that shed stick on its side, you can see how you can you can reach completely across. Well, if you couldn't express yourself, how would you de-stress yourself? And if you couldn't make and build and sing. So when you reach the top of the loom, having the shed stick becomes more of a hindrance than a help. So you just pull it out and then you just kind of have to weave the last remaining rows without the aid of that stick. So it will be a little bit slower, but you'll be fine. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, so now the weaving is done and we're going to go around the edges and just kind of, kind of smooth out the, the lines get a little wavy sometimes. So I'm just gonna push things so they're close enough to the edge. I like to try to even things out a little bit while it's the fabric is still on the loom. You can make adjustments once it's off, but it's just a little bit easier when it's on the loom. And the reason why I'm doing this is around the edges is which actually I'm most concerned with the edges because when I take the cowl off the loom, I'm going to loop these other uh, loops together. And if the yarn is the weaving is pushed in your loops will be kind of like really loose and wonky and it just doesn't have a nice finished look. So it's worth it to kind of space out your rows a little bit just with your hands. Okay, now that we're done with that, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to loosen that wing nut. And then get this yarn out. There we go. Okay, so now to make the cowl connected, I have to take the loops off, finish the cowl on the top and bottom edge on these long sides, and then I'm going to come and do the, these, this, the short ends, the short sides of the looms I'll do at the end. So uh, I'm going to actually be flipping this fabric in half and doubling up the loops on one end. So in order to prepare to do that, I'm going to remove the loops on the long sides and when I do this out of habit I usually start on a corner that does not have a yarn tail okay so when I come to the other end I can pull the yarn tail through so in order to do this you just take 
a loop off, move to the next peg, take a loop off, and pull that second loop through the first. And then just keep repeating that process all the way across the loom. Okay, so when you get to the end, and you have the yarn tail here, you can just ignore it and move on to the next peg. Uh, I tend to just pull up a loop here. It helps secure the yarn a little bit better. And then I go to the first peg on the short side. And, and it's actually technically the second peg, but it's the first peg on this attached piece. And loop one through and just let it rest right there. And we're gonna let, leave that alone and I'll repeat this process on the second side. The ends are now finished off and we're going to just connect our short ends together. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to take this giant stitch holder that comes with the loom and we're going to remove all these loops one at a time. And this is how we're going to move them to the other side. And once you have all the loops off, just close the stitch holder and then we're going to turn the loom around. We are going to put all these loops back onto the loom. So on the short end here you will have two loops on every single peg. Okay, so Okay, the next step is to connect these all these loops together. So you just start on the edge, grab the top loop, grab the bottom loop, pull that second one through the first one on your hook. Move to the next peg, grab the top loop, pull it through, grab the bottom loop, and you got to make sure when you're doing these multi-strand projects, make sure you have all the loops held together. When you get to the end and you've connected all those loops, you can pull it and it kind of just puts it, it looks like a braided edge, which is kind of cool. And then to even things out here, it's pretty usual for it to look slightly wonky here at the top. So what I do is kind of go under one of these loops and pull a loop up and pull it through. And then I'll just go into the next one, kind of like I'm crocheting this last little bit. And then we're going to weave the end in. And we're just going to go kind of follow the weave structure, the over and under pattern. I'm going to try that without stretching over all the other yarn pieces out of shape here. Let's see here if I can. This is the inside of the cowl, so this shouldn't be noticeable from the other side. And then just make sure you're kind of making sure you're not pulling too tight. Go under one more time. Okay, and then I can cut that off. I'm always afraid I'm going to cut through the whole thing. That would be such a disaster. You get done weaving and then cut your piece apart. Okay, and so up here, what I'm going to do is this looks kind of loose. So to tighten this up a little bit, I'm going to reach across and pull up a loop with that yarn tail. And I'm just going to pull that back through over here. And I'll probably just do that one more time. And then I'm just going to weave the yarn tail in over here. And make sure that all the, when you weave in the ends, you want to do it loosely. You don't want to pull it severely, otherwise you'll have a wonky join here. You want that join edge to be smooth. 
cut off the tail here. And then turn this right side out. And you have a nice cowl, which is kind of cool that, to see how those... The join I usually have, I usually wear that in the back, so it's not very noticeable. Okay, so now you are left with a nice little cowl here. This doesn't take very long to make, so in a very short amount of time you can make a gift for a friend or something for yourself. You can put that on and you can um, wear this under a coat or... Um, I wear these all year round because I tend to be cold in every situation. Uh, I probably wouldn't wear it in blazing 90 degree weather outside. Be an odd sunburn. You have your bathing suit and your cowl. Um, don't really recommend that look, but do what you want. Um, the nice thing about these is if you get yarn that's washable uh, and dryable, um, you can go ahead and just throw it in your wash. You can also work with yarns that are a little more uh, gentle. I treat everything. Like anything I, I weave, I try to wash, hand wash usually. So uh, just pay attention to the instructions on the yarn that you purchase. And this is also, I really like using uh, hand spun and hand dyed yarns work really well for the cowls because you can make a, a, a couple cowls usually out of one skein. And it's kind of nice because uh, you get a lot of mileage out of that yarn and you don't need a whole lot to create something really cool for your wardrobe. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Send me pictures of what you end up making because I'd love to see your work. You can send those to jennifer at craftsanity.com. Yeah, and let me know if you have any questions. You can post those below.